In this video, you're going to learn how to solve systems of equations using substitution or elimination. We're going to go through 10 examples total. I'm going to show you a few examples working with the substitution method, a few examples then working with the elimination, and you'll have a chance to practice some of these on your own at the end of this lesson. So let's dive in. This is involving two variables, two equations, and when we talk about a system, we're trying to find out that point of intersection where these two lines intersect. So if we were going to uh, draw a graph, these are lines, and we're trying to find that point, that xy coordinate where the two lines cross or intersect. So if we're going to use the substitution method, the first thing you want to do is you want to get one of the variables by itself on one side of the equal sign. You either want to solve for x or you want to solve for y. In this first example, you can see that we already know what y is. We've already got y by itself, y equals 2x minus 1. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put that in place of y in the second equation. This way we're going to have one equation involving just one variable. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's our system. We've got 3x minus 2. And instead of y, we're going to put what y equals, that's 2x minus 1, equals negative 1. Okay, now let's just go ahead and solve this equation for x. We're going to distribute the negative 2 into the parentheses. So you're familiar with this, this comes out to negative 4x plus 2. Let's bring down the 3x. 3x minus 4x is negative 1x. Let's get the variables and numbers on opposite sides by subtracting 2. So we have negative 1x equals negative 3. And if we divide both sides by negative 1, you can see that x is coming out to 3. Now we need to solve for the y coordinate. So if we take 3 and we put it back in for x here or here, either one doesn't matter. I'm going to do the top one since we already have y by itself. Uh, we can solve. So we've got y equals 2 times x, which is 3, minus 1. So we have y equals 6 minus 1, which is equal to 5. So their final answer is going to be the coordinate 3, comma. 5, that's where these two lines would intersect. And you can check your work. If you take 3 and put it in for x and 5 in for y, it should make the top equation true. And if you put 3 in for x, 5 in for y, it should make the bottom equation also true. So it should make both equations true, and you got it. Now let's take a look at another example, number 2. Now this one's a little bit different because we don't know what y equals or x equals. So we have to rearrange one of these equations to solve for the variable y or for the variable x. And it doesn't matter which one you pick. However, it's oftentimes easiest to solve for where there's a coefficient just in, in front that's a 1. So it's easier here. I have 1x or 1y or this is negative 1y. I wouldn't necessarily would try to get this x by itself because I'd have to eventually divide everything by 2. And then you start to get involved with some fractions, and it makes the work a little bit more challenging. Still get the same answer, but let's go ahead and take this top equation here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to subtract x from both sides. So that's going to give us y equals 7 minus x. Okay, now I know what y is equal to. I can put it in for y in the other equation that we haven't used yet. So let's go ahead and do that. That's the substitution part. It's kind of like if your math teacher doesn't show up, a substitute math teacher uh, shows up in their place, right? So you're just swapping those two uh, math teachers. That's what we're doing right here. And now we just have to solve this equation. We just have one variable and one equation. So let's go ahead and distribute the negative. That gives us a negative 7 plus x. Bring down the 2x. Let's see, 2x plus 1x is 3x. Add 7 to both sides. Divide both sides by 3, and you can see x is coming out to 9. Now, if we want to solve for y, let's go ahead and plug x back in here or into the other equation. Either way, it doesn't matter. We'll get the same answer. Uh, let's see. We have y equals 7 minus 9, which comes out to negative 2. So now we have our final answer, x comma y. This is going to be written as a coordinate, 9 comma negative 2. Now, if you're not sure if you got the right answer, just plug it back in. 9 plus negative 2, yes, that equals 7. 2 times 9 is 18. Minus a negative 2 is like plus 2, that equals 20. And you know you got the right answer. Let's take a look at some more examples. Okay, for example number 3, we're still working with substitution. 
And if I was gonna do this problem using substitution, again, I have to solve for either x or y so that I can take that quantity and substitute it into the other equation. But in this case, you can see we've got a 5x, a 2y, a 3y. It's probably gonna be easiest to solve for this x right here. So let's go ahead and do that. To get this x by itself, I'm gonna subtract 3y from both sides. So we get x equals negative 10 minus 3y. Okay, so now we know what x equals. And here's a mistake sometimes students make. They put it back into this equation, but we wanna put it into the equation that we haven't used yet, which is in this case is the first equation. So we're gonna say five, instead of x, we're gonna put what x equals, negative 10 minus three y, uh, minus two y equals one. Okay, so now let's go ahead and solve this equation by distributing. Five times negative 10 is negative 50, minus 15 y, minus two y, equals one, combine like terms, add 50 to both sides to get the variables on one side, numbers on the other. So we have negative 17y equals 51. We wanna solve for one y, so we divide both sides by negative 17, and you can see y is coming out to negative three. Now if we wanna solve for x, we can plug it back into either Basically, any equation, you'll get the same answer, but let's go ahead and put it in here since we already have x by itself. So this comes out to x equals negative 10 uh, minus 3 times negative 3. So that comes out to x equals negative 10 plus 9, which is negative 1. And our final answer, we want to write as an xy coordinate, alphabetical order, so negative 1 comma negative 3 that's the point where these two lines would intersect or cross if you graph them. Again, you can check by plugging it back in to make sure it makes both equations true and you know you got the right answer. Now for number four, we're switching over to talking about how do we work with the elimination method. So the elimination method is a little bit different. We don't have to get the x by itself or the y by itself and substitute. What we do is we actually try to add or subtract these equations together. You can multiply any equation by a constant as long as you multiply all the terms by that same number. You can multiply both equations by a non-zero constant and then add them together or subtract them. So let's take a look. In this particular example, we can just go ahead and add these two equations together because see negative one y and positive one y, the y's are gonna cancel and we just get three x equals 12. Now we can solve by dividing both sides by three and x equals four. Now if we wanna solve for y, we take x and plug it back into here or here, doesn't matter, either equation, you'll get the same answer. I'll do the top one. So that's x equals four minus y equals one, solving for y by subtracting four from both sides. Divide both sides by negative one and you can see y is coming out to positive three. And our final answer as an xy coordinate, uh, alphabetical xyz, so that's four comma three. And you got it. Again, if you wanna check your work, four minus three, yes, that does equal one. Two times four is eight, plus y, which is three, that does add up to 11, so you know you got the right answer. Let's take a look at some more challenging elimination examples. Okay, for example number five, We've got these two equations here, and you can try to eliminate the x's or the y's, whichever one you think is gonna be a little bit easier. It doesn't really matter uh, which one you pick. In this case, I can see that I've got 2y, 2y. I could actually subtract these two equations. That would be one way to do it. But I really don't like doing subtraction too much because sometimes you get the, uh, subtracting a negative number, and sometimes students make little simple mistakes. So what I recommend is, Let's try to make one of these positive 2y and one negative 2y. So I'm gonna multiply this whole equation here, this bottom equation, by negative one. If I distribute that negative one, I get negative x minus 2y equals negative nine. Now when I add straight down here, I can get three x minus one x is two x. Two y plus negative two y, that's zero. Seven plus negative nine is negative two. Okay, now we just have one variable, one equation. Can divide both sides by two, and you can see x is equal to negative one. We can take the negative one and plug it into any one of the equations for x and solve for y, it doesn't matter. I'll just go and do this top equation here. So we've got three times x, which is negative one, plus two y equals seven. So we get a negative three plus two y equals seven. I'll do the opposite, add three to both sides. 
So that gives us 2y equals 10, and if I divide both sides by 2, you can see y is coming out to 5, and our final answer, x comma y, is going to be negative 1 comma 5, and you got it. Okay, for example number 6 now, this one's a little bit different. We've got 4x minus y equals 10, 3x plus 3y equals 0. Should we try to eliminate the x's or the y's? What do you think? Well, in this case, I think it's going to be a little bit easier to eliminate the y's. What would I have to do to eliminate the y's? Well, wouldn't it be great if this was a negative 3y and then a plus 3y? When I add those together, the y's will cancel. So in order to make this uh, negative 3y, I have to multiply this whole equation by 3. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's distribute the 3. That's going to give us 12x minus 3y equals 30. Now when we add, you can see we're going to get 15x. The y's cancel, equals 30. Solve for x by dividing both sides by 15. x is equal to 2. Now we can plug it back into any one of the equations. I'll just do this equation right here. 3 times 2 plus 3 times y equals 0. So we have 6 plus 3y equals 0. Subtract 6. 3y equals negative 6. Divide both sides by 3, and you can see y is coming out to negative 2. Final answer, you want to write it as an xy coordinate. This is going to be 2 comma negative 2, and you got it. Okay, well, I'm going to demo one last elimination example, and then I'll have you do number 8, 9, and 10 on your own for practice, and we'll go through those together. But before we do that, if you're enjoying the way that I explain things and it makes sense to you, and you'd like to go deeper with your math studies, I've got an Algebra 1 and an Algebra 2 video course for sale, uh, Algebra 2 slash College Algebra, and I've got links in the description so you can check those video courses out. Uh, also, if you would like to just support the videos that I'm putting up here on my Mario's Math Tutor YouTube channel, consider joining as a channel member. For a few dollars a month, you can support the channel, and I really appreciate that. I see each member that uh, signs up your uh, YouTube handle or your channel name, I see that in there and I uh, definitely appreciate that. And then lastly, if you just wanna purchase one of my uh, fun math t-shirts for sale, I've got a Teespring store and I, there should be some uh, uh, t-shirts below this video here on YouTube that you can check out as well if you're interested. So let's dive into these last few problems and get some more practice. So for number seven now, this one's probably the most challenging problem in this whole video because we really can't just add these together, and we can't just multiply one equation by a number and add them to cancel out the x's or the y's. We actually have to multiply both equations. So you have to decide, do you want to eliminate the x's or the y's? I'm going to go with the y's just because these coefficients are a little bit smaller than the coefficients in front of the x's. And I notice that 2 and 3 both go into 6. That's the least common multiple. So I'm going to multiply this top equation by 3. That'll give us a negative 6y. I'm going to multiply this bottom equation by 2. That'll give us a positive 6y. Then when I add that negative 6y and positive 6y together, they'll cancel each other out. Okay, we distribute the 3. We get 21x minus 6y equals negative 87. And if we distribute the 2, we get 4x plus 6y equals 12. Now when we add straight down, the y's cancel. We get 25x is equal to uh, negative 75. And if we divide both sides by 25, x is equal to negative 3. Now we can take the negative 3 and plug it back into any one of the equations. I'm going to plug it into this bottom equation. 2 times negative 3 plus 3y is equal to 6. So that's negative 6 plus 3y equals 6. Add 6 to both sides and we get 3y equals 12, divide both sides by 3, and you can see that y is coming out to 4. So our final answer as an xy coordinate is negative 3 comma 4. Okay, so for number 8, 9, and 10, why don't you pause the video for each of these and practice and see if you can get the correct answer. So what do you think for number 8? What would you do? You can use the substitution method or the elimination method, either one. For number 8, though, if I was going to do this problem, what I would do is, since I know what x equals already, I would just do the substitution. I'd put in place of x right here. So 3x is equal to 2y minus 1. And now we can solve for y. So I'm going to distribute. This comes out to 6y minus 3. I'm going to combine like terms. 
uh, get the variables on one side, numbers on the other. Divide by 7, and you can see that y is coming out to negative 2. Now, I can take the negative 2, put it into any one of the equations. I'm going to put it into this one because we already have x by itself. So that comes out to x equals 2 times negative 2 minus 1, which is negative 4 minus 1. So x is negative 5. So our final answer, x comma y, negative 5 comma negative 2, is what you should be getting for number 8. Okay, pause the video and do the last two problems, 9 and 10. Any method, substitution or elimination, whichever one you prefer, or maybe try both ways just to get practice. But if I was going to do number 9, I would probably do the elimination method. Generally, when the variables are on the left and the numbers on the right, everything kind of lines up, and I like to do the elimination method. If I already have one of the variables by itself, like y equals something or x equals something, then I'll do the substitution method. So for here, it looks like it's going to be easiest to eliminate the y's. So if I multiply this at top equation by 2, that'll give me negative 2y plus positive 2y. The y's will cancel when we add those uh, two equations together. So if we distribute this 2 now, we get 4x minus 2y equals 6. If I add these together, I get 10x is equal to 0. And if I divide both sides by 10, you can see that x is coming out to 0. I can plug the x back in here or here. It doesn't matter. Either one. I'll just do this equation here. So 6 times 0 plus 2y equals negative 6. Anything times 0, of course, is 0. If I divide both sides by 2, y equals negative 3. So our final answer, x comma y, 0, negative 3. Okay, so now let's do number 10, the last problem. So what would you do on this one? Well, I'd probably do the elimination method because the variables are on the left, numbers are on the right. I'm going to eliminate the x's. It looks like 5 and 2 both go into 10. So I'll multiply this top equation by 2 to get 10x. I'll multiply this bottom equation by negative 5 to get negative 10x. So let's go ahead and distribute. That gives us 10x plus 6y equals 4. And then over here, this is going to give us negative 10x plus 35y equals 160. Okay, so now when we add 10x and negative 10x, that cancels. We get 41y equals 164. Divide both sides by 41, and you can see y is coming out to 4. We can plug it back into any equation. I'll just do this top equation. So 5x plus 3 times 4 equals 2. That's 5x plus 12 equals 2. Subtract 12 from both sides. So we get 5x equals negative 10. Divide both sides by 5. And you can see x is coming out to negative 2. And our final answer, x comma y, is uh, negative 2 comma 4. And you got it. You can plug it back in to check to make sure you got the right answer. And you can check your work. So great job if you're able to follow these problems. The next step is to figure out if there's no solution or infinitely many solutions. And we're going to talk about that in this next video that I'm pointing to right there. Go ahead and follow me on that video and we'll talk about the special cases of no solution or infinitely many. I'll see you in that video.